Hello, hello, homeschoolers! Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Sa lahat pong na nakikinig or nanonood sa amin, Facebook or YouTube, magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Ako po si Novi Antanya, your homeschool coach, and we are talking about what really matters most in our homeschooling journey. And for today's episode, I am so excited dahil po ito po ang ating fifth episodes on questions on what we need to ask our veteran homeschooler. And I am so privileged to be able to introduce to you our guest today. I'm sure hindi na po siya bagito, ha? definitely kasi <laughs> a veteran. Eh. But before that, I would just like to introduce her. Okay, so that you can get to know her better. So 15 years na po siya nag-homeschool. She is Special Projects Manager of CFA Homeschool. Yung mga taga-CFA dyan, hello! Founder, Mathletics, and Math Camp Philippines. Work as a lead consultant, design of appropriate place-based ADM curriculum and materials for the students of Nanavotas Fishport Save the Children. She is also the present president of Happy. Okay, congratulations po, madam. Thank you so much, Novi. Yes, more than 30 years na po siya sa HROD experience in American-owned multinational corporations in semiconductor industry. Wow! ISO 901 Internal Auditor Certification at TUV Rainland. AB Political Science University of the Philippines, Diliman. Oh, mga taga-UP! Hello! Taking up public <laughs> leadership credential, Harvard University Kennedy School of Government. Let me introduce to you, Madam Bedai C. Fortuna. Hello, Madam! Hello, Novi! Thank you so yes. much for inviting me here. Magandang... Yes. Hapon po, or magandang gabi, or magandang umaga <laughs> sa ating mga viewers. Yes, um, to yes. all of our homeschooling families, hello there. Thank you for your time. Alam ko, sa dami mong ginagawa, and now you're a happy <laughs> president. And nag-aaral ka pa, grabe, no? Later, I'm gonna ask you, no? I know um, there's a lot of questions I want to bring to you, but pipiliin ko lang yung yung dapat nilang marinig for today because okay, okay. as much as I want no we are really pressed for our time but yes, anyway yes. madam syempre to get to know you better paano nga ba kayo nag-start mag-homeschool and why did you decide to homeschool okay so i have three sons um yung youngest ko when he was in grade 2 um, before the end of the school year, I was called into the principal's office. So, syempre tayong mga magulang, oh my gosh, di ba yun yung biroan natin na lagi na, hala, papatawagin ka sa principal's office. And so, that <laughs> happened to me. So, I was so um, anxious. I was so nervous. Ano kayong ginawa ng anak ko? Okay, so I was, I went to the principal's office and then my son had two offenses according to the principal. First was that he was giving a sort of a, parang hard time to the teachers kasi kunyari daw uh, for example uh, they were going to discuss about different plant types ang sasabihin ng anak ko cotyledon dai cotyledon he was just in grade 1 so or wow, kunyari ang lalim na noon ah <laughs> sabi kaya ma, ano kasi siya mag, mahilig talaga siya to read to read things even at that young age and then kunyari ano uh, kunyari uh, he was going to be asked on exams, what kind of a cloud was this? So it was a grade one exam. He was supposed to answer cotton cloud, but he knew that it was a cumulus cloud. And so he would tell his teacher, teacher, the correct answer is not here. It's supposed to be cumulus, but it's not on the choices. Ganon, or kunyari, parallel line. The teacher would, would draw parallel lines then the board and then hindi masyadong straight. And then he said, if you're going to extend that, that's going to be that's not going to be parallel anymore. That they're, they're going to meet at a certain point because they're not straight. They don't mga ganung tipo. So parang so that's one. So parang sometimes siguro the teachers because they were not too prepared for that didn't know how to maybe share that type of an information with the rest of the class. Parang ano parang siguro na ni sila a bit. Parang ganon. Parang ah, ano na naman kaya ng sasabihin ng batang ito. So that was one. The, his second offense was that um, there was um, parang there was a, an incident at school. Um, the class was noisy. 
and the language teacher was shouting at the kids and my kids said teacher you should learn how to love <laughs> and because of that I, I don't know what the exact reaction was of the kids but then he was sent outside parang nagalit si teacher so he was sent out so this is a big school no so i was really surprised that this happened uh so my family is known in that school so he the so the principal saw him outside standing and then he said oh because i t i told my teacher that she should learn how to love and so because i guess because of that the teacher was out sort of reprimanded because of what happened and then parang after that Parang he became a little, she became a little biased towards my son. And so parang yun, nagkaroon na siya ng, ng offense. So anyway, um, just to cut the long story short, um, we had him tested. My son was tested because the principal said uh, he should be tested. And then, so lumabas yung math niya and science and, and English were grade 6 level. Filipino, not so much kasi um, hindi siya masyadong magaling at that time sa Filipino. So yun. Uh, so that's when we decided na to homeschool because we didn't know what to do. Eh. Um, so the school wasn't offering any sort of program for kids like him. Um, ayon, so that's when we decided to homeschool. Alam mo, nakakatuwa lang yung sitwasyon when you were telling us that story, no? Yeah. Kumbaga, offense. Par parang I don't see that as an offense. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Homeschooler. It's just yeah. at that time, siguro, ano mga year yung mga Madam Beda? Uh, this, was in 2000, this was in 2008. So that's oh, when we started. 2008. Yeah, siguro 2008. Your, your child was born like in the early 2000 then. Oh, mga... Yeah, exactly 2000. Yes. Ah. He was born yeah, in 2000. Tapos talagang he was the sort of child na talagang very curious at the yes, same time. Yes, very and inquisitive. Yeah. Very inquisitive. Tapos he kept, he wanted to read, ganyan. Um, also had very good computer skills, even at a very young age. He could uh -oh. get, he could do mga shortcuts. And then even his older brother was saying, how did you do that? Can you teach me? <laughs> so he was just really very curious and inquisitive. So ganun yung situation. Nako, kanino nagmana knowing that <laughs> you're so in what you do? I'm sure sa'yo nagmana. Pero if I may add, natatawa lang ako kasi naalala ko when you were telling me that story. When yeah. I let my kids also, um, and you know, go to the conventional school, yung isang yeah. reklamo na isang teacher is, your child is too confident. Yeah. You're yeah, too confident. Yeah. Yun ang problema namin. As, Kasi, as if that, that were a bad thing, right? <laughs> oh, uh, parang, your child is not giving, ano, giving uh, others a chance to answer. Kasi oh, lagi yeah, siyang yeah. nag answer and everything like that. Kaya, I have to filter my child first, eh. Yeah, kailangan yeah, ko yeah. talaga siyang kausapin at kailangan, syempre, parang ha, mali ba yung ginawa ko? So, in that situation, what did your child said, no, in that situation at that time? Um, wala naman. Parang, uh, he was really, uh, there was a point na parang he didn't want to go to school anymore because the, the teacher was sort of, siguro to, to a certain extent, bullying him. Parang he was, she was kind of biased na towards him. Eh. And in fact, um, his previous advisor when he was in grade one talked to me one day and said, you know what, this teacher is spreading stories about your son in the teacher's room. So it was really such a heartbreaking situation because she was a full grown woman, a teacher at that. And then Sigura just because maybe because she was reprimanded by the principal because of that incident. And so parang I parang Sigura yon medyo na offend siya sa son ko because of what happened. Oh yeah. Oh nako. Sad to see mga ganun talagang sitwasyon. But I'm yes. so glad that you decided to homeschool. Yes, diba? yes, exactly. And at that time, so I tried. So I, I didn't even know what homeschooling was nung time na yun. So I did my research. And then I couldn't find, it was uh, 2008, I couldn't find anything. But I didn't find any providers at the time. I, I was doing my research. So parang, so I, w I started out as an independent homeschooler. A homeschooling mom, yeah. <laughs> o, kasi so, yeah. noong mga time na yun, talagang mahirap din dahil parang few, few lang ata eh. Not sure if yes, definitely so. the Masters Academy started yes. at that time. They're the pioneers. Yes. Pero hindi lang talaga siya at least kasi wala pa namang masyadong social media at that time. So hindi tayo masyadong aware. No? I think so. Oh, I think yes. so. Tapos yes. siguro meron pa rin akong mindset na yung parang academic, ganun. So parang hindi pa rin ako. Yes. Ayan, yeah, so yun. Fully so convinced, yun. no? Hindi ka pa fully convinced. Yeah, How fully convinced. How about your spouse? How did yeah, we, you responded to that? 
okay naman yeah we we both get um we both had the decision to homeschool my son kasi nga we thought na it was best for him we didn't want him to be in that situation na medyo toxic <laughs> while he was so very young grade grade two lang siya at the time so yeah so i'm so, very blessed now yes, we decided both of us decided all... Yeah, your son is also blessed to have you as parents. No? <laughs> Thank you. Your goal is to really meet his needs at that time. Yeah. And that yes, is his yes, need. Right. So, ito naman, syempre as a veteran homeschooler, alam ko na matatapos na yung anak mo, no? This school year. Is this yes, your this school last year, year for homeschooling? Yes, sabay yes. Sabay tayo actually. I'm 17 yes. in homeschooling, pero sabay <laughs> na tayo na ito na yung last year din natin. Yes, But yes. curious lang siguro yung mga ibang listeners natin and viewers no, na nag-homeschool, like, start pa lang. What is your typical homeschool day look like in your household? Okay, when we were still homeschooling, uh, the first few, of course, ano muna, chores muna, no? like having breakfast. Uh, he, had, he had chores, like he had to fix his bed and fix his room, fix his study area, mga ganon. Um, fix himself up for before studying. And then we had a few hours in the morning to study. Meron kaming, ano, meron kaming schedule every day. Um, kanyare, uh, day A. So meron kaming day A, day B. So day A would be uh, this subject, subject areas. Day B, iba, iba naman subject areas. After that, we had lunch and then we went out to play. <laughs> Kasi in, the, in our village, uh, there are a lot of parks there. And so we would play basketball or we would play baseball. Masasabi mo ba, madam? Na yes. you are somewhat um, a structured homeschool teacher, or more you are more on the rhythm. How do you describe yourself? You're like your method. Siguro Through the ako, years, no? For, siguro kwento mo yung from the start mo na. Siempre kung bago hindi himay himay pa natin, nag-adjust pa tayo. And then what you are right now? Yes, at the at first super structured ako. <laughs> Obvious ba? <laughs> Pareho tayo. <laughs> so nag super structured ako kasi yung son ko, my my second son uh, was in this a uh, uh, school, no? Super ganda ng school niya. And so I was thinking, uh, okay, so again, let's say para everybody would have a context kasi yung second son ko is in Philippine Science sa main campus, no? So I thought Siguro that would be the best for my son, yung ganong approach, no? So, inisip ko, ano-ano ba, sino-sino ba yung mga kids na nakakapasa sa Pisay? And then I realized, sabi daw, 14 students came from Ateneo. Yun yung most number. And then six students came from my son's school. Hindi ko niya sasabihin kung ano yun. Kasi pare-pare, yun yung school nila. <laughs> yun yung school ng son ko dun, na with that teacher. So... So sabi ko, ah, oh, sige, atin niyo pala yung my best na ano, na passing rate sa Pisay. And I really uh, respected, siyempre nerd, no? I really respected that school. So yun yung ginawa ko. Kumuha ako ng curriculum <laughs> ng atin niyo at saka ng mga books nila. I had a friend there. And yun, she gave me yung parang mga uh, outlines and then books. So that's what we started to to use. Um... So yun, yun yung, yun yung umpisa, no? And then, buti na lang, um, when my son was already in grade 7, dumipat kami sa CFA. So we became um, we became attached or enrolled in a homeschool provider. <laughs> And it was C the CFA team that pounded into my head, na, huy, hindi ganyan. <laughs> uh, it's not just academics. It's not just all about academics. It's about the development of the total person. So academics is just one small thing about homeschooling and what's important really would be character development and forming lasting deep relationships with your child um, and your child with you and the members of the family instilling um, values such that your child when he grows up would be a contributor to Philippine society. Yung mga ganon, of course, in spiritual formation. So all of these things, dun ko natutunan na, ah, okay, I got it. Hindi pala Although to a certain extent, maybe din naman kami physical activities, but then, um, parang chamba lang yun eh. Uh, it wasn't really a conscious thing because my my focus really at on the uh during the first few years was academics, <laughs> parang ganon ayon. So yeah, so thank you so much, CF18, <laughs> for that. Yes, so, na so natuto talaga ako about oh, the essence oh. of homeschooling when I got into the homeschooling sector talaga as an active participant. So. So yeah. now you are kind of mixed. 
you're yes. like yes. you do structure but you're also flexible that's what you well mean. yeah kasi nga my son is already graduating in college so we're not homeschooling anymore pero yes um siguro if i were if, if i were to do it all over again i would be more mindful of that Oh. na hindi talaga siya academics lang na what's more important really would be to give your 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 children the space to find out about themselves the space Come to on. reach diba? it <laughs> <laughs> diba? totoo yun diba totoo naman yun eh yeah. kasi what really matters most is really the heart of the child it's yes. not even the achievements or kung anong yes. level na siya or nag advance ba siya yes Kaya, yes Ito yung one of the greatest things that I would look forward to talk to the veterans like Madam Beda, you know, mga listeners, mga viewers natin, <laughs> na matututo tayo na hindi naman lahat speak and span when you start eh. And you, you try to rediscover and rediscover yourself and rediscover your kids as well. But the bottom line here is, I'm sure Ate Beda will agree, is to meet where your child is. And also, yes, definitely. you as a person, as a mom, di ba, hindi ka dapat nagiging monster just because Yes. You were institutionalized, no? You institutionalized. <laughs> hindi yes. Para, ano naman, ha? Hindi naman sa mental hospital. What we mean is like, syempre, we <laughs> brought up in a very structured, di ba, environment. Tayo, I agree. Tayo. You know what? I yeah. agree with that wholeheartedly to a certain extent we were all institutionalized. <laughs> di ba? Kasi ang hirap talaga niya matanggal sa, ano, eh, sa mind. And oh, even those, man. I'm sure even those who are already homeschooling for several years right now and especially those who are new, yung mga mommies natin and daddies who are watching that right now, like, I'm sure laging naka, ano yun eh, it's like hovering over our heads na yung mga dati yung mga ideas natin about what schooling is what academics should be ko ano ba dapat yung ginagawa ng anak natin ganun. you know what will be uh, just just a short story meron akong isang uh, isang mom from CFA to no? sabi niya sa akin you know what teacher um yung it yung anak ko i always see him naka ano lang naka stare into space not doing anything not doing his homework blah 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 so i'm i'm really worried about him and i said you know what mommy that's really actually very good kasi diba our kids need the space to process things diba yung talagang just to be and to think and to and to feel you know they have to give themselves the permission to feel how they feel about the things that have happened to them on a daily basis Diba? And sometimes when they go to a regular school, sometimes parang regimented, eh? very regimented. Diba? Na at this time, you do this. At this time, you do this. Recess and then lunchtime, you go home. Homework N next day, you do it all over again. So there's no time to process things. And I think that's very important talaga yung just letting them be. Hindi kailangan na when we're homeschooling mommies and daddies, it's really not important na uh, lahat ng bawat isang waking hour ng ating anak ay may activity. <laughs> So we need to give them space. Grabe, nakakapagod yun, di ba? <laughs> Grabe talaga, <laughs> oo. And so yeah, we, they need space to process things, to think about yes. things. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. And that's what the beauty of homeschooling is. Eh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, yes. Yung dati nating mindset na akala natin, kasi we were brought up na parang, bakit nakatingin sa kalawa kayo anak ko? So we were like, <laughs> but that's not true, yeah. di ba? They're yeah. absorbing yes. their processing that's a great word as well and they're also trying to analyze no yes, kumbaga na de develop yung critical thinking nila kasi yeah. hindi yung ano di ba syempre tayo yung mga memorization na kailangan gawin na kailangan yes. uh, talagang kasi i'm one of the greatest revelations especially in the pandemic if you um if you also realize that ati beda di ba resting is really productivity. Yes, exactly. It's part of productive work. Yes. Diba? Yeah. Kasi yes. pag drained ka na at lagi mo nang puro homeschool, homeschool work or whatever work that you are doing, you cannot be able to impart no, freshly yes, yes. to others. Kung baga, even magiging cranky na anak mo or ikaw cranky na rin mismo. Yes, kung wala yes. kang doon. So, oh. yan. Magandang point yan, mga homeschoolers, no? Hindi <laughs> porket nakatina inyong anak sa kalawakan, eh. May issue well, ang ating mga anak. Oo, oh, or wala na siyang ginagawa. Di ba? Mayroon na siyang ginagawa. And also for us, siguro yung mga homeschooling parents din natin, uh, just in case you f you're feeling medyo uptight, medyo mainitang ulo, medyo pagod, yeah, take your take the time then to rest, mommies and daddies. It's important kasi kayo yung nagda-drive ng homeschooling ng mga kids natin. So you have to be always mentally, emotionally prepared for that. 
Ayun. Which coincide with my next lesson. Kasi Yay. grabe ko nakita ko yung credentials mo. Grabe, nag-aaral ka. At the same time, ang mga responsibilities outside homeschool. So how do you manage providing that homeschool journey or homeschool life and the flexibility of doing um, homeschooling at the same time? Siyempre, madami ka rin responsibility. So I don't like to... You know, put the word balance. Pero kasi hindi, there's no such thing as balance naman, di ba? Mas madami. Yes, because you always way. prioritize something yeah. over something else. Yes. So how do you manage? I think that's the right word. I think I'm already at the stage in my life where my sons are very independent. So yung, yung youngest ko, who homeschooled before, is already about to graduate from college. So he's already an independent learner. So mostly ang ano namin would be uh, talking, discussing, going out, mga ganyan. Uh, It's not really that much of a burden anymore. So, um, yeah. Um, So now, mas nakita ko, siguro siguro you can just imagine, mas, mas parang I feel na mas hectic dati yung schedule ko. And so now I feel na I have time to pursue all of these other things that I've always wanted to pursue but didn't have the time because I was focused very much on uh, homeschooling my kid and maybe, of course, taking care of my kids while they they were growing up. Ganon. So it's really just a matter of... Siguro yung isang, I, I'd, I'd like to share a term na, na, na natutunan ko sa, sa bago kong schooling. No? It's the term trade-off. So the term trade-off talks about, parang sabi niya, there's not, no perfect scenario at any given time. And so you always lack resources sometimes that can be money or, or time or, or whatever, uh, other types of material resources, etc. And so if you have a lot, if you have some goals in life, definitely you need to prioritize one over the other. And there's, there may be a point na yung isa mas ma, parang relegate to a lower level but then you do, you still do it consciously kasi importante yun eh, na you recognize na hindi perfect yung mundo, hindi perfect ang family, hindi tayo perfect. Laging may, hindi na, hindi tayo pwedeng maghintay sa isang perfect scenario para sabihin natin na, ah, okay, I have achieved my goals. Or, na, or now I can pursue my goals kasi perfect na yung scenario. So, pero yun, lagi talaga siguro isipin natin, talagang, there is a trade-off. Sometimes we have to prioritize something over the other, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's your choice as a thinking human being kung anong gusto mong bigyan ng priority based on yung status niya as a family, what your goals are, what stage you are at, at your lives, etc. Oh, I love that word trade-off. Totoo yeah. yan eh, no? Yeah. Kasi we, actually, we have to really take it one day at the time. Nababago yes. eh. Kasi siyempre, like, for example, we cannot gauge ourselves with all the things that we want to accomplish. It's yeah. something that we have to take it one day at a time. And kumbaga, tiny habits or tiny things na pwede mo ma-accomplish a little, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. But then again, hindi ka naman na-de-drain at the same time. Para bang, yes. di ba sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, it's like, we have to choose our battles, no? Yes. We have to choose our battles. And we have to accept then that there are things na kailangan muna, like what you did, di ba? Kumbaga, trade-off yun na, hindi mo muna pinorso yung gusto mong gawin. Siyempre, nag-focus ka muna sa homeschooling. And yes. then now, nag-aaral ka na. Grabe, ate. <laughs> no? Which, I, I, alam mo, alam mo that... During the pandemic, no? Oh, really? Then, yes. Oh, I attended nice. a school in San Francisco. Oh, nice. All about learning how to respect a child's learning style. Oh. Yes. That's nice. Uh-huh. Yes. That's so, very important. Ako. Oh. <laughs> I call it, it's just my second semester now. Ooh. So, hindi pa. Hindi pa. Wow. <laughs> and I'm so madami ka may impart sa amin through that aspect. Yeah, yes. Yes. Sobra. Sobra talaga. And yun nga, maganda yun eh. Yung for us as parents, I, I really love what you did. So, para tayong ano, na parang we can relate to each other na yeah. at a certain point na kaya na natin. Sige, let's go out and let's learn. Kasi, yeah. uh, kasi yung parenting and homeschooling is a lifelong process. Uh, and we can't say that we are fully capable uh, of doing it. Tapos tapos na, di ba? We always have to keep evolving and learning yes. and taking Never in Never stop things. learning, di ba? Yes. So oh, makakabuti yeah. din sa atin yan. Dahil ako 49 years old na Madam Beday. So I don't like to stop, uh, you know, just because matatapos na yung anak ko. Alam mo yun, syempre. 
Yes. You have uh-oh. to make and rediscover yourself as well. What what else are the benefits that you could be able to give the society, diba? And yes. be a blessing in what the talent that God has given you. Yes, exactly. So yon. So dapat talaga we don't we don't um let's not stop what let's not want to stop learning kasi importante talaga yon even as a wife or as a spouse yes. diba you always have to keep learning kasi yes. diba there are uh, uh, well we are also very much connected na and we can use the internet for a good purpose by researching yes. studying immersing yourself to different practices good practices best practices para tingnan mo ah, ano pwede ko palang gawin yan ah, baka ganito oh, yung ganoon diba so importante yeah. talaga diba madam beda ay napakapalad ng mga henerasyon ng homeschoolers ngayon ayun tayo yes. natin nung nag-start tayo talagang bulag anong provider <laughs> anong mga kuya yeah, which i will make this question kasi oh, sige, sure. sa veteran Uh-oh. homeschooler sinasabi nila <laughs> na kung ano kayang ginagamit yung mga beday, kung bakit sobrang talino ng kanyang anak. So, can you share, oh, disclaimer lang po, mga listeners and viewers, ha, kung meron mang sabihin si mga beday na mga materials, uh, hindi po kami nagbebenta rito. <laughs> just that we want to share what uh, uh, Madam Beday used to be able to, you know, teach her child as well. So, can you share any resources or any materials that has uh... been significantly good for your homeschooling journey? And why okay. do you recommend it? Ah, okay. So, well, kanina parang na-share ko na na nung f- first few years namin, I was using Ateneo de Manila books. Magaling talaga sila. Pero I don't know exactly na. Hindi ko na maalala yung mga titles nila. Eh. Pero yun. Um, and then, uh, for math, I would suggest either Singapore math or Vedic math. Oh. So, yung Singapore, alam siguro alam na natin lahat yung Vedic, yung Singapore math, no? Yung Vedic math naman is a type of a, a math approach uh, that's based on the Vedas. <laughs> so, it's uh, it's uh, it came from India. So, it's really more oh. on mental math and making making math learning fun. Ganon, so parang through games and uh, so, yon, so parang I think yung combination na yon. For Ganda. CFA, so yeah. parang yung Singapore, ginawa mo siyang more on the critical thinking, problem solving, and then is a application with play using yes. math uh-uh, yes. for real yes. life. That's and that's the, re- that's the reason why, well, nung nag- nag-homeschool na rin yung anak ko sa CFA, we started the math camp, math camp Philippines. Kasi oh. at that point, <laughs> kasi at that point, ano, parang yung maraming mga kids parang medyo nahihirapan ng konti sa math, ganon. So, uh, so tinatanong nila ako, bakit yung anak mo magaling yung mga co-parents na? So bakit yung, mga, yung anak mo magaling sa math? Ganun. So so we started that. And uh, the idea behind it is to teach math through games. So yun. So y- y- siguro yun din yung ano, ano. It's not really just the materials, mommies and daddies. It's really more the approach. Um, If it's going to be, well, tingnan natin kung ano din po yung characteristic ng anak ninyo. Pero what whatever material you use i guess if you're going to break it down into something that's going to be fun for them then yun yung mas ano yun yung parang mas maaano nila mai-internalize nila mai-imbibe nila um first uh, going back to your question as a cfa it's a depth ed curriculum so it's aligned with the depth ed and so for parents what we did was just to supplement no supplement so yun so i was really focused on math and science um and then, pero ngayon, right now, gusto ko yung, ano, among the different approaches right now, gusto ko yung Charlotte Mason. Ah. But, yeah. So, yeah. Because I think, I think because... Living um, books, no? Yeah. Kasi, ano siya eh, kasi it's important for our kids to realize that their subjects are not unrelated, separated things. Diba? Kailangan alam nila na integrated siya, aligned yes. siya, re- related siya, ganun. So, maganda yon And I like that the, the tradition of Charlotte Mason na parang talking about things. Uh, you, you know, like, uh, kasi yun, that's where, that's where you find out na talagang naintindihan nila. <laughs> yes. Again, diba yung narration or processing part yun? Yes. Oo, eh? oo. Naintindihan kasi, nila. Yes. Definitely. I'm sure you, we believe that when we talk about it and not only understand that it's integrated, yes. we could be able to relate with the reality of life. Yeah. And definitely, magkaroon ng love of learning ang mga anak natin. Kung baga, they always look forward to learn because of it. Because you were able to put that 
atmosphere of safety in learning, di ba? Yes. So yes, I, yes. I also I also love Charlotte Mason and Uh-oh. through the years I've been eclectic a little bit of ah, that, eclectic, little yeah. bit of kasi iba't iba yung anak natin, di ba? So, yes, tama, tama. So yun yung tama. approach, no? Yes, yes. So. Yes, thank yeah, you so yeah, much yeah. for sharing that, Ate Beday. Yes. Pero Ate Beday, eto no malaking ano to malaking issue at the, i think until this very day even after the pandemic di ba i know when we talk about yung mga officials na papa ano na kakausapin sa dep eh di ba social issue naging yeah. issue ba sa iyo yan naging challenge ba yan sa anak mo uh, 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 socialization ah uh, um not not really kasi yung CFA kasi has its own program for socialization so we have clubs Kaya uh, pag nag-join ka ng clubs, talagang you will have there your peers uh, to to befriend and to be with, ganyan, to ha- to learn with, ganyan. So, meron kasing Friday, nung time ng anak ko, meron Friday clubs eh. So, sa CFA, so, and then they go to to school on, on Fridays at, to just to attend their clubs, ganyan. Tapos, meron din kasi nung time nung anak ko, merong Wednesday, Wednesday classes. So, that means um, CFA provided teachers for math and science um, on every Wednesday. No? Now, with, with actual teachers, kasi, kasi nga at that time, parang grade 7, na parang iniisip nila, hindi, baka hindi kaya na ng parents or baka yung ibang parents medyo mahirapan talking about, you know, uh, teaching algebra or trigonometry or geometry, ganun. Kaya they provided teachers uh, for our kids. So, yun. And in this uh, cl- types of scenario, yun, um, nagkaroon ng friends yung kid, yung kid ko. So, and also, yun nga, ang socialization naman talaga is not just, you know, having peers, right? Kasi, what's really important is how you integrate your child within the family, how he is with the family, how he feels a sense of belonging, a sense of protection, ganyan. And also, not just your family, but the, the extended family as well. So, ayon. So, with that, yung a very loving, close-knit family that surrounds him, and then with other their activities like let's say clubs, extracurriculars, or having tutors with other, you know, teachers with other classmates, then yeah, parang complete package na siya. Yes, I totally agree with that. No, There are a lot of ways. Hindi mm-hmm. talaga issue ang socialization yeah. sa mga homeschoolers natin kasi I also believe that the first, the first, first greatest relationship that your child needs to have is the mother and the father. Yes, exactly. And kung manorture yun at mafeel ng bata na safe sila, definitely, it's easier for them to connect with other people. Mm-hmm. And yun nga yung maganda sa atin kasi hindi lang tayo nakabak sa isang age group, di ba? Yung sinasabi mong class. Yes, oo. Ibang-ibang klase, like, kami dito, Ate Beday, uh, some of my friends, like, 10 families go to my house at may baby pang dala. So, my kids also get to take care of those kids. And then, lahat ng klaseng edad nandito and it's fun. Yes, oo. Uh-uh. For them to be able to recognize that as well and be kaya, aware, diba? Kaya nga uh-huh. sometimes, no, we, diba, some people are amazed at how homeschoolers communicate. Parang, yes. diba, they are so knowledgeable, they're so confident. Kasi nga, hindi lang sila um, parang limited to a specific group, age group of friends or yes. people that, that they are with. Kasi yun nga, they communicate with our with their lolas and lolos, with their titas and titos, di ba? With friends of the family, with the family yeah. members. So talagang, ayun, I think that's one trait talaga ng mga homeschoolers, no? Na they, they're able to, and then, yung maganda pa dun, their views are respected, di ba? Yes. In, in, in the family setting, kaya they have the confidence to share their opinions. Gan, kasi minsan, siguro sa class, because there's a lot of them, the time is very limited, and then sometimes may peer pressure pa, sometimes pinagtatawanan yung sagot, or sometimes baka, yun nga, parang mali, no? So parang nagkakaroon ng konting shyness na, ay, ayoko nang i-share, baka mali, ganon. Pero in, when, if we do homeschooling right, talagang we can develop that in our kids, di ba? Na, Totoo. You know, they will have... Kasi that's the trust factor between a parent and the child, eh. Important yes, yun. Yes, correct. So, uh-huh. sometimes is we, you know, kung dali na natin sila sa totoong mundo, they will be sometimes, syempre, parang, oops, 
yung mga lahat ba naturo ko and ma-apply ba talaga ng anak ko, di ba? Parang ganon, di ba? Sometimes we have that kind of fear. I'm sure you, you also have that kind of fear. Yes. Na parang, yes. naturo ko ba talaga? Am I really enough? So, na-feel mo din ba yun? That is my next yeah. question. Did yes, you yes. that? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I felt that especially sa... Yung mga, hindi, yung mga hindi ako masyadong magaling, like for example, Filipino, uh, yung mga mape, <laughs> yung mga ganun. Hindi kasi ako masyadong, hindi, hindi ako kasi uh, masyadong magaling doon. Siguro most specialty talaga yung Filipino. So I admit, nagkaroon ako talaga ng ano doon. That was my weakness. So yeah, pero yun nga, no? so ang nakakatuwa lang, when they went out into the world, <laughs> we, I, I realized na, uy, okay pala. Ano, um, yeah, we did well. And, and, and so, so let's not panic too much, mommies and daddies. Let's not second guess ourselves too much. I know, yun, lagi inisip natin, no, nakakasabay pa ba yung anak ko, ganun. I think if we do, you know, in, in, in Japan, hindi naman sila talaga agad pumapasok sa school, di ba? I mean, I think up to grade 3 yata, eh, wala sila talagang mga parang formal subject areas. And then in Finland, it's, it's similar. So, Hindi naman, basta po ang importante is we love our kids, we do what we think is best for them, we observe them and see what their learning styles are, um, we see what they're weak at or what where, where their needs are at, and then we support them, and, and then everything is going to be fine. <laughs> everything is going to be fine. Because as I said, you know, academics yeah. is not just, it's not the end all and be all of homeschooling. Yeah, yes, I anything. totally agree. Yung yes. lahat ng mga sinabi ni Ate Beday, I totally agree. It's like, we need to walk with our kids, whether it's a negative or a positive journey. Kasi yes. yun yung importante. Kasi it's not always going to be a bed of roses and sinasabi na, who you know, yeah, yeah. Yan, so dapat ito yung resulta. You cannot, you cannot be able to gauge that. But mm-hmm. the goal is, kung magkamali man ang anak mo, kung magkamali ka man, will you still be there? Or yeah, are you yeah. gonna quit? So, Uy, ang gandang mga, point niyan, yes. Yeah, our, it, that is something to think about mga homeschoolers na nakikinig sa amin ngayon or na papanood po tayo, no? Uh, yun, kasi di ba, I, I think in school, ang medyo, ang medyo, uh, for me, toxic sa school is because, kanyari, pag nag-fail ka, it, you're a failure, di ba? And so, kids are so afraid of failing. But then, failing is part of the learning process. So, what's good about homeschooling is that if your kids learn, eh, we just reteach, and then and then afterwards if there is an exam they retake the exam ganon hindi ba or we, we allow them to um to really internalize kung ano yung hindi nila na, naintindihan nung una so there's no stigma of failure and i think that's one in, very important thing that we can impart to our children kasi talagang life would be a series of failures not just in academics but in everything else diba family life business diba career ang ang dami niyan eh. and and we have to think that failure failures are an integral part of our life kasi otherwise we won't learn anything that's going to that that's what makes our lives uh, continuously improve, di ba? And continuously develop and become better. So, yun siguro yung isang mindset na magandang i-impart natin sa mga anak natin. Na kapag nag-fail sila, hindi tayo magagalit, hindi tayo sisigaw, hindi sila magkakaroon ng big fat zero, ganyan, or matatakot, oh, nag-fail ako, ganyan. But, yes. Yeah, but just we just encourage, ah, okay, so yan ba yung hindi mo naintindihan? Sige, let's go back and talk about this. Ganun, let's see it. And even sa mga and even if it's not just academics, interpersonal relationships, di ba? Minsan, ang anak natin nagtatantrums. Siyempre, there will always be something like that, di ba? In the course of their lives. So, if you treat problems like this as um, part of life, a natural part of life where we sit down and we talk about it um, and and you allow your child to say feelings and then you share your own feelings very honestly and very qui- quietly and calmly and then there's going to be... um. Parang an, an, a common understanding na, ah, okay, I don't, I'm not afraid to make mistakes kasi I know that we are going to just sit down and talk about it and discuss and I will learn something. Ayan. Very well said, Madam Beda. Totoo po yan eh, no? Thank you. Uh, one of the things yeah. that I also learned is how our kids will respond to adversity. Yeah. Yan ang one of the major skills that we need to teach, no? Na, in life talaga, you cannot 
always get what you want. You yeah. cannot. That's the reality, and it's what we should be able to nurture is when failure comes, are we there for them? That's number one. Number two, mm-hmm. ano ang state ng emotional at mental health ng mga anak natin if they're going through that? And how are we going to be with them? Anong klaseng attitude do we have as a parent? Kasi nga, di ba, we need to lead by example. Eh. Yan yes. yun, I yes. think. Yan ang very important. Modeling, very important. Yes. 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 Na mahirap na tayo rin. Yes, may sigaw tayo. Tapos ito yung nagre-react tayo rather than responding. So, yung mga ganong maliliit na foxes in a daily-ness of our homeschooling journey, yun na nakikita ng mga anak natin. At yes. yun po ang importante. Which, ang ganda ng sinabi mo, that's why, this is one of the last few questions I'm going to ask. I love <laughs> okay. our conversation, Madam Benda. Yes, I how love it you, too. Yeah, how do you evaluate your child's progress? And is that is um like a high grade for you is a success? How do you define success as you do assessment to your kids? Ako for me right now, ang siguro ang main na tinitingnan ko is the character of my child, not really his academics, not how many uno unos he got. <laughs> Mami, nakauno ko, ganyan. So, pero, but that's not what's most important to me. Ang tinitignan ko ngayon is what his struggles are and how he overcomes his struggles. Kasi, um, and then, I w- and then for me naman, my role is to be there for him, to help him process just in case he'd want me to to process. Ngayon ang lagi namin na, na pag-uusapan ng anak ko just in case uh, meron siyang may, there's an issue or there's a, some sort of a struggle. Now ang parang kasi because he's already uh, about to graduate. So what I tell him is you are in control of your life. You are the, the decision maker of your life. You're already an adult. And so how are you going to solve this problem? So ngayon hindi na ako yung nag, parang nag, anong tawag mo? Then spoon feed. Hindi na ganon. And then, mainly, my, my, what I really look at is yung, yun nga, the way he processes things. Parang doon na lang ako umaalalay. Um, making sure na just in case something happens, he is able to go forward, you know, still loving himself, still loving his family, and knowing that his family is just there with him every step of the way. So, yun, yun, mas, mas sa character ako nag, nag-focus. I think that's the most important uh, gauge. Uh, Di ba, lagi na lang natin sinasabi academics, ano ba yung grades niya? Or let's say other things, no? Like for example, ano na bang height ng anak ko? Ano ba siya? Ay, mga ganun, parang physical things or external things. For me, as a parent, the most important thing is the intangible thing, uh, the intangible thing, which is his character intangible because it comes from within and then of course it's expressed in terms of his behavior diba? but then of course it's still because our kids and just like us are still being molded and are they're still evolving into the type of uh, persons they are going to be when they grow up then ayon eh, parang it's really an internal knowledge of themselves knowing that I react like this when it's like this, or I think this way when I see this, yung mga ganon. And because of my self-knowledge, I have the capability to move forward and do the best thing, the best thing I can with respect to my life and, you know, being a contributor, not just to the family, but to society in general. So yun. Hindi siya external for me. It's internal. Uh, it's a knowledge okay, yes. of oneself. <laughs> maraming maraming salamat. At siguro sure. mga listeners natin, viewers, hindi po grade. Hindi 98 or sama. Yeah, yeah. Hindi yeah. po ganun. And yeah. I totally agree with that. And that is long-lasting. No? Yes. Long-lasting and Long-lasting po yan. Legacy. Yes, yes. Yes. And if you do all of these things correctly, if you start with uh, character development, spirituality, and all of these things, the academics and the achievements will fall into place as well. They will fall into place because the most important things are already addressed, are already taken care of. Yes, thank you, Ati Bedai. Well, <laughs> this is something that maybe magiging ano tayo, futuristic in a way. And I know 
you have experienced a lot with DepEd. Alam mo naman, <laughs> mga pinagdaanan yes. natin, di ba? Yep, yep. <laughs> and, and I know that you love education here in the Philippines. And sometimes, yes. meron tayong mga wish list sa buhay, di ba? But regarding the state of education here in the Philippines. So, how do you see homeschooling evolving in the future here in the Philippines? And uh, do you have any like predictions or concerns for the homeschooling community here in the Philippines? I think homeschooling is going to be a very important modality in the Philippines because we're in the 21st century. And of course, everything is being done, can be done remotely. And so why not take advantage of that situation? Um, but then not just homeschooling, I think all of the alternative delivery modalities of the deaf ed should be strengthened because it's very important. Tayo, tayo as a country, ang dami nating problema sa buhay. <laughs> Hindi ba? Meron tayong baha, meron tayong lindol, meron may sunog, may earthquake. There's so many, there's so many things that challenge us as a people. And so it, it's because of and because of all of these things, yung mga anak natin minsan hindi nakakapasok sa school, right? And so we really need to strengthen our alternative delivery modalities. I hope that happens. I hope we really give emphasis on that and make them as viable as regular schooling. And of course, because we are part of homeschooling, definitely homeschooling is an integral, very important part of the alternative delivery modalities. So um, I I also hope that our uh, the officials, not just DepEd, but also the ones in government, realize that we're already in the 21st century. <laughs> there are so many developments <laughs> happening worldwide. Diba? So, sana po, yung, ano, yung pag-iisip natin, medyo buksan din natin ng konti. Uh, and, and let's benchmark with the best practices in the world so that we are not left behind. And so that our kids can really take advantage of everything that a 21st century society can provide them. Ayon. <laughs> so. Totally agree. But one of my wish list to add to what you said yeah. is maybe I could be able to see like a homeschooler like you be one of the officials <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> no, kasi that is really my desire. Na magkaroon tayo ng bosses. Eh. Bosses yeah. yes. being that mm-hmm. type of department. Yes. So something but, uh, that will also initiate change. No? Yeah, I really love what One you're doing. Tiny. Yeah, I, I love what you're doing and I love what all of the other homeschooling leaders are doing because they are having uh, podcasts like this and avenues like this wherein we share information, we share thoughts, we just sit down, take a t- you know, take a break and relax. And ito po, hindi po, it, productive po ito, hindi po tayo, yes. <laughs> hindi po tayo naglalakwa siya, natututo tayo. And it's, it's very important kasi yun nga, we, we need to, to build a community because it takes a community really to raise our kids. And it will be our kids in the future who are going to run the country and hopefully, yeah. ayun na ta, ano na tayo, no? we're always in the precipice of development, never really going over the hump. Diba? Pero siguro if we really are band, to, uh, band together, you know, and work together, especially in homeschooling, in happy we say that ano, eh, we, we build the nation one family at a time. That's, yes. that's, the, that's the motto of happy. Eh. Kasi ngayon nga, we have the chance not just to mold our kids academically, but to mold them spiritually, character development, their, their social responsibility. Hindi ba? So, all of these things are very, very important towards nation building. And if we do it correctly, baka may pag-asa tayo. <laughs> Finally, yes. maging developing, developed country, hindi na developing. Iba na yung ano niya sa yes. akin. Hindi na I-N-G-E-D na. <laughs> that is really, I'm praying about. Kaya ito po yung question ko. Happy. Kayo po ang president kayo ng happy yes. ng Homeschool Association of the Philippine Islands. Can you just yes. share to us a little bit how did it start? Ah, a little okay. background of happy so that yung mga bago nating homeschoolers hindi sila aware what is happy and what does it stands for okay happy is the homeschool association of the philippine islands so happy so happy tayo diyan so it started well it has started before i entered happy no siguro naka several years na sila running uh the mission of happy is to empower leaders homeschooling leaders okay so that we can work towards the development of the homeschooling sector such that the homeschool i'm just paraphrasing na kasi ano para mas lalo nating maintindihan kasi ang yun nga ang hope natin is that we build our nation one family at a time and we want to empower homeschooling leaders so that in turn we can empower homeschooling families mommies daddies and homeschoolers themselves 
so that they can see themselves as responsible and accountable citizens in the future, learning, loving how to learn and wanting to learn on a full um on a full-time basis for life. Kasi diba everything naman talaga is a learning process, diba? Even if you're not reading a book, you're just, you know, immersed in life. You are learning actually. So yon, that's what homeschooling is. It's an umbrella organization of homeschool providers and independent homeschooling families and groups, support groups. And now we are already also welcoming private schools and public schools that are offering homeschooling. So now they're also becoming members of HAPI. Wow, lumalaki na talaga ang Oo, happy. Luma Oo, lumalaki. Ah, lumalaki na. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank And you. I, I have seen happy talaga how they really have the heart to really help specific specific families. Basta ito pong happy, kung meron kayong issue, may mga questions kayo, you can go to happy. Dahil this is really a group of people na like-minded with the same values and the same aspirations to help us homeschoolers, no? Uh, kung ano bang mga journey na pinagdadaanan natin. So, whether you have an issue with providers, legalist, uh, mga legal terms na hindi natin naiintindihan, you can go and follow them in their Facebook account. We yes. are happy and in their Instagram account as well. Yes. Which, we are having um, a great news, a yes. great announcement, announcement that uh, Ate Beday will be able to share to us. <laughs> Meron pong mangyayari sa March 3, 2023. At ano po ito? Ito yung na National Homeschool Day. So we are inviting all of the homeschooling mommies, daddies, and kids <laughs> to celebrate with happy. Let's have a national, nationwide and an international uh, celebration of the National Homeschool Day. So... Happy is going to be spearheading, if I may, would that be okay? Um, of course, maybe? madam. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. So Happy will be uh, spearheading some uh, activities. So for example, in ang ano natin, ang hashtag natin is Happy Tayo Together. And we would like to have uh, nature and environmental activities on that day. So we're going to have nature walks, tree planting. Uh, we will be releasing mga pag, uh, tortoise, tortoises sa, sa beach wow. um, somewhere in, in northern Luzon. Yes. So the, the rationale for this is that for two and a half years, uh, two and a half, maybe a little more than two years, we have been locked in our, in our homes because of the pandemic, right? And so now we're already free to go outdoors. And so we just want to, we, we just want to give thanks. And because we feel so blessed that now we're allowed to go outdoors and be with each other and commune with nature and enjoy the environment, you know, because all of these things were taken away from us during the, the pandemic, right? And then, um, and so, sabi nga nila, di ba, things that are taken away from you, sometimes, dun mo na realize kung gana sila ka-important, like our health and wellness. Um, and then also, yun nga, yung environment, going out, our environment, nature, etc. And so ito po yung ating theme sa ating National Homeschool Day. Uh, if I may, uh, we're going to have a celebration from Davao until Northern Luzon. So in Davao, our or our happy members, um, Arrows and Quivers, Better Together in CFA Homeschool will be there. We're going to have some um, meetups with homeschooling families in Davao, in Bacolod. Um, the, our organizer would be um, Lamlight Homeschool. So all of the homeschooling families that are based in Bacolod, please get in touch with Mark Lopez of Lamlight Homeschool. They're going to be the organizers for our NHD there. In Cebu, it's going to be Living Pupil. So please get in touch with them because we want this to be a semi-centralized um, uh, celebration so that we can all be together. Um, in Luzon, we have Gopala Learning Haven. That's going to be our organizer for the South Luzon celebration. And then in Metro Manila, we're going to have Teen Hop. Teen Hop is Teen Homeschoolers of the Philippines. Okay, so that's under Lenny Yuzai. And so please get in touch with her. If you're a Metro Manila family, they're going to put up their own celebration. In Rizal, we have Peniel. Uh, um, who's going to be our main organizer there. And then also there's another group in North Luzon. So it's going to be a nationwide thing. In fact, in UAE, magkakaroon din sila ng vegetable garden planting. 
So ito yung ano natin. So ito yung ating parang gagawin natin sa National Homeschool Day. Um, on November 3 itself, there's going to be a program. It's going to be aired nationally and internationally, of course, through FB Live um, or some other platform like that. And then we're going to be together, celebrate it, celebrate the National Homeschool Day. Even if we are apart, we are still going to be together <laughs> in this celebration. Let's celebrate all of the blessings that we've achieved, that we're still here after the pandemic. Let's celebrate that we have survived it, that we're still here and that we have the capability to contribute more to the homeschooling sector, to our families and to the nation. Yes, thank you so much, yes. Madam Bedai. So <laughs> don't forget that. So yung mga details na sinabi ni Ma'am Beda, I will try my best to put it in yes. our description here in our podcast, in our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram account. And so, you can, you can you also have any... go to the Happy um, Facebook page and the Happy yes. website to get the yes. details. Yes. So, yung mga lahat ng areas na gusto nyo punaha, puntahan na malapit kayo, meron mga ganong areas. So, you can also DM kung ano yung mga specific contact person na pwede nyo hanapin. So, yes. let us celebrate. Alam nyo po, Seven years. Seven Atin, years. Give us background kung paano nag-start to na bigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na makapag-celebrate sa araw na ito. Yes, it was very important. It was a very important process. Si Donna, Donna Simpao was our uh, president at the time, happy president at the time. And because her, her brother is uh, Senator Kiko Pangilinan, so they were able to to talk about it and discuss about how important uh, homeschooling is. And so uh, Senator Pangilinan uh, passed a Senate resolution and then it was, and then everybody ag agreed in the Senate that there should be a National Homeschool Day uh, celebrated once a year. And so we, because the, it was passed on March 3, so that's why we celebrate March 3. That's the day that we are allocating for celebrating the blessing which is homeschooling. Yes, ito pong hudyat na unti na unti na po tayong nare-recognize. Kaya kailangan, yeah. we should be loud and proud as a homeschooler, yeah. di ba, madam? And yeah. be united in one heart and in one spirit. So if you want to join this, save the date, March 3, 2023, yeah. the seventh National Homeschool Day. So don't forget, when nagpo-post kayo within the day, just use the hashtag, happy tayo together. At talaga namang happy. And if you'd like to join mm -hmm. for an online Zoom celebration, meron dun po sila. So tune in for more details and so that we could be able to celebrate together. And I am so, also celebrating with you guys. I'm not gonna be here lang in the Philippines. Yay. But <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> celebrating you in heart and in spirit. Okay. Yes. And I think Ati Laxmi will be able to share yung mga giveaway from iHomeschool PH. Yes, under yes. happy. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming Ay, maraming ako, salamat. Ate Bedai. <laughs> yes, thank you for this conversation. It's so refreshing, no? Uh, to be you. able to know you and I know through the years, no, you are a woman with wisdom. You're a woman who always uh, conveys and express your wisdom to help others like me as well. And I'm learning a lot from you. Maraming maraming salamat. At natutuwa ako nag-aaral ka because I know that you will use that to be able to help other homeschoolers like me. Yes, well. yes. Maraming maraming salamat. So, mabuhay ka. Thank you so much. Bedai. Thank you so Pero, much, Novi. Yes, Thank you, everybody. But to everybody. this conversation, what is one advice that you would like to leave our uh, homeschoolers who are listening and watching us right now? Is there's one advice you want to give them in this journey? Academics is not everything. Um, we have been entrusted with the lives of our kids and so we have to make sure that when our kids are adults that they will be responsible and accountable members of society so there there is that trajectory we're not just parenting them just for nothing you know we're not just parenting them just to have careers or to graduate from college we're parenting them because they have a role to play when they become citizens, when they become adult citizens of the country. And that's what we have to prepare for. And so we have to always think about the most important pillars in homeschooling. And they are, of course, character development, spiritual formation, social responsibility, emotional quotient. Um, um, what else? Um, 
Yeah, and then on top of all of that is academics. So academics is just part of it. Um, hindi po academics ang pinaka-importante. Academics is just part of it. And so if we do our jobs well, then we will have done our share <laughs> in building a Philippines that we're really very much proud of, that we're really, you know, uh, that we really contributed to. And so I think that is exactly the essence of homeschooling. Maraming maraming salamat, <laughs> Ate Beday Well said. Okay, if you think that this podcast or you have, you can see us in YouTube and in Facebook account na alam nyo na madami kayo natutunan, please share and give us a rate so that we will know what you have learned in this conversation with Madam Beday. No? Siyempre, kailangan na malaman kung paano nyo ma-apply, paano nyo natutunan ito because we want to know your journey as well in this conversation. And always remember that in homeschooling, relationship is more important than academics. Ako po si Novi Antan, your homeschool coach with Madam Beday Fortuna. Bye-bye for now and God bless you. Bye. Bye. God bless everybody.